Welcome to the My Haunt Life Podcast. Hello, welcome to the My Haunt Life Podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Russell. And this is a pretty cool episode. Uh, we have an interview with the creators behind Trap House LA, which is an art installation and escape room happening at the Think Tank Gallery in downtown Los Angeles. Now, you might know the Think Tank Gallery because there have been some haunts there. Uh, Alone was there a couple years ago. Drunken Devil has done something there. Uh, most recently, uh, if you listen to our podcast about The One from the Tension Experience, where we went to this secret location, that was also there. So Think Tank has haunts in their blood. And also, they have done, over the course of the last couple of years, several immersive art shows combined with live performances. They are a gallery space, and yet they are reaching into the performance arts, they're into theater, into music. Uh, they're a fascinating space. It, it, they are a, a collaborative group that allows many people to come into their space and experiment. Yeah, they're really a great resource for L.A., uh, because if you are an artist, if you are a theater person, if you are a haunt person, they can help you out. And it's really cool that they're they're doing this. And in the interview, they talk about other things that they've done uh, for the community um, as far as music goes and, and other things like that. So uh, there's a lot of information being covered in what we're about to share with you. Now, specifically, the reason that this interview took place is, as Mike mentioned, uh, during this haunt season, during the fall season in Los Angeles, where things are ramping up at an incredible speed, uh, they announced something called Trap House. And immediately, we were both intrigued by it. Uh, Mike, you sent me the information. And I, I think we both had a very similar reaction, which we discuss in the interview. But um, as an introduction, we should just say that it's an escape room with an art gallery around it. Right. We have gone to a really sort of a rough preview night as they were actually putting the installation together. Uh, so we didn't see all of the artwork. They were loading in pieces of artwork as we were there. Uh, and we did do sort of a beta test of the escape room. Right. The beta test wasn't 100%. Uh, so we don't feel it would be right to give this a full review just based on what we experienced. There are still puzzles that they need to put in. There are things that they need to hook up with the art that's going to be hanging out outside. Um, but we will tell you what we think of it so far and if you, if you should go. And, I mean, spoiler alert, you should go. Oh, definitely. I think one of the things that, that Mike and I, uh, we both walked into the space uh, and just immediately Mike and I went into opposite directions because the first thing that happened with both of us is we looked across the room and saw a piece of art that just spoke to each of us. And we both made a beeline for the, like different pieces of art and we walked around the gallery and, and saw some of what was, uh, what was coming to life there. And they've got some big, well-known effects artists, um, uh, they teased during the interview that Dick Smith's estate is going to offer a couple of pieces. Which is incredible. Yeah, absolutely. If you don't know who Dick Smith is, pause this right now and Google his name because you will see things like The Exorcist. Yeah. Uh, trust <laughs> or, us, you, you know Dick Smith's work. Yeah. Uh, and numerous, numerous other artists. Uh, some you'll recognize, some that you probably won't. Uh, there's some really cool stuff going into this art show and we were lucky enough to see a preview of a little bit of it. So Mike, how much do you want to say about The Escape Room? Well, I mean, you know how we are. We barely say anything without saying a ton. <laughs> but I mean, for what for what we saw, I mean, it was they said it was about 80% complete. And that 80% was so much fun. Like, yeah. there were really cool puzzles and the the scenario and the setting is awesome, especially for someone like me because I'm into punk and I'm into horror and when you have a story based on loosely based on Gigi Allen mm -hmm. and human trafficking and you make it like a real scenario like that's that's awesome yeah there's themes to this escape room which which echo uh, very serious issues in in the modern world that we live in and I think they did a very good job of of creating a piece of entertainment that makes you think there's a couple of reveals in this thing that are are really disturbing at times which I, I 
and you know of course we mean that in a fun way <laughs> but it does make you think and also even though we did beta test a, a, a not completely finished room they did explain to us a couple of things that they were going to add which sound utterly fascinating because it does connect the room very much so with the theme of the art gallery and the art exhibited around it uh, and there might be some interaction between those two events. So, and we'll just leave that at that. I yeah, think. we don't want to spoil the interview too much. Yeah. So, uh, getting into it, Mike. Anything else we need to say about the escape room? I mean, for the the TLDR version of this, uh, it's a horror based escape room. It's a half hour long. Um, I think it's between twenty five and thirty dollars, depending on what day you go and when you buy your ticket. And on top of that, there's a free art show that's going on all around it. And it's a horror art show. It has special effects. It has blood. It has guts. It has skulls. It has everything you could possibly want in an art show that you're seeing outside of of a horror-themed escape room in October. So here is our interview with the Trap House LA slash Think Tank crew. Special thanks to Adam, Jacob, and Patrick for letting us interview them. And here's the interview. Today, the My Haunt Life podcast has gone on location. Today, we're actually recording in the Think Tank Gallery space in downtown Los Angeles. Uh, many haunt fans in the Los Angeles area are familiar with this space because we've gone through many haunts in this space. Uh, definitely some art shows here, as well as some other events, including Alone, A Drunken Devil. And uh, this season, they're definitely tackling something ambitious, and that's why we're here to learn more about that. And we just want to warn you that this is a construction zone, so you might hear some banging and screaming and hands getting cut off possibly by saws. So uh, if you hear that, it's every, everything's A-OK, -okay, and we're doing this so it opens on time so you can come check it out. We have several guests with us today, and we'd like each of them to introduce themselves. Adam? Uh, my name is Adam Malichevich. Uh, I'm a concept arts and art director for Universal Studios Japan, and uh, I'm in town doing this escape room with Think Tank. I'm Patrick Nissum. I'm one of the co-directors at Think Tank Gallery, and I uh, am assisting in producing this escape room experience in addition to the art experience we'll be bringing up as well. And I'm Jacob Patterson. I'm also one of the directors here at the Think Tank, and I'm kind of handling more of the art side of things, which I'm sure we'll get into. So the past few years, Think Tank has become a hotspot for haunts. Uh, Alone was here, like Russell mentioned, uh, Drunken Devil, the tension experience lately. Um, what made you want to do something on your own, and how did that idea come to fruition? Well, first and foremost, I would like to really like extend my appreciation for both uh, Matt and the folks at Alone, Devin and Lawrence. They have demonstrated that the haunt community is not only one that is inclusive, but one that is really eager to see new ideas float to the surface and aren't afraid to share their secrets and have been really encouraging throughout this process. We've been in communication with both of those folks and uh, I've, I've really got to give them, you know, tip of my hat as far as what they've contributed to our efforts thus far. As far as why we wanted to jump into it, I think everything we do here at Think Tank has <clears throat> an element of immersion all of our big events and you know you could see it in our last show break bread you could see it in you know our previous shows you know dating back to even ritual or coffee graph and you know in my own little like evernote journal that i've got on my like phone or ipad whatever i'd always had a kind of section that dedicated to what could I do with a person who has to be forced to suspend their disbelief and walk into a room and engage in an experience that the only way to get out of is by participating with it. And so the escape room by design and, you know, the haunt experience by design really, uh, you know, is really conducive to that idea. And so, you know, being that, you know, my background is production, film production primarily and you know, structuring the narrative was such a fun, I, you know, concept for me to do. And, uh, you know, even coming up with some of the puzzle ideas, which, you know, we'll get into it later, but Adam has really taken and ran with it in tremendous ways. Um, you know, it's just been a lot of fun and it's, it's a fit for our brand, I think, because of how we structured the narrative and just consistently like how we've been on the haunt radar for two years, just kind of 
almost as understudies, kind of watching these folks produce these events. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> Something that we haven't mentioned yet is the name of the event this year. Right. The event is called Trap House. And that kind of goes into what we were scheming on as far as making sure that it was kind of on brand. And so Trap House to and Trap House by definition is kind of um, a domain in which like drugs are dealt, kept, cooked, and um, is often a place of violence and just uh, an environment that n no one would really want to be in unless you were orchestrating whatever operation was going on inside of it. And for us, you know, we had this character who is loosely based on uh, rock legend Gigi Allen. And if you, I think there's an interview with him on Geraldo from like, I don't even wow. know, like early 80s or something. You can tell because his mustache hasn't reached its final form. <laughs> <laughs> and it was amazing to see him speak just as, I don't, you know, you never know if he was trying to con everybody or if he was really this fucking crazy mm -hmm. uh, but he's like you know i used to sell drugs you know i used to do all this and you know do all this nasty shit and then i discovered rock and roll and without rock and roll i would be a serial killer like straight up that's a paraphrase of pretty damn close to the real quote and you totally believe him when he says it completely well i mean it, <laughs> it, 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 the claim is substantiated for the most part by his actions yeah. i mean like when he didn't just talk the talk and then show up to a concert, play badass music, and then walk off stage. Like, you would show up to a Gigi Allen concert with a black t-shirt, and then you'd leave with a red t-shirt because it's got your blood on it. Mm -hmm. Like, he would sock you in the fucking mouth, and he would take shits on stage, and he did not care. And he was, if you put a bunch of rock icons in a lineup and ask me who murdered somebody, Gigi Allen would be at the top of the list. <laughs> And even if I didn't know the evidence, I'd be like, well, it's probably this guy. And like, let me see the evidence. But it's Gigi Allen. He's a crazy person. And to relieve your balls on command. I mean, <laughs> it's talent. That's, 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 that is a special talent. Yeah. That's talent, baby. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it made sense for us, too. I mean, the, just the idea of trap and house together in a sentence is very kind of it coincides well with the escape room theme. So there were kind of multiple mm -hmm. levels as to why we chose the name. And it's not just an escape room that you have here. You're also having a, art, an art show to go along with it. Which, which came first? Was it the art show or the escape room? And then did you make the other based around what that original idea was? Yeah, so this would be a good place for Adam to chime in too. But basically, um, the owner of our company, uh, John Kennerman, he's been working in casting production in reality TV, of all places, for years. And um, he's casted a show called Face Off for many years, uh, which is a special effects makeup show, a lot of like monster creation and stuff like that. And he's been saying, like, let's do a special effects makeup show. And we've been like, how do we fit it into the brand? Like Patrick was saying, we kind of had like a, a post-street art vibe, and we're like, how do we fit this into the brand? But the one thing that we were doing, and it wasn't until... Noah from No Persinium started recording podcasts here in this very studio that I learned what it is that we were doing, which was that buzzword of immersive. Right. Um, it wasn't until then that I realized we had this X factor, like this immersive element um, that we incorporated into all of our shows, whether we've built skate ramps with TVs in them or whatever that is. And so they, uh, you know, Adam and, and a friend named Evan and John hit us up and said, hey, we want to make a show where the participants of an escape room are the art, basically. And um, they hit us up with this idea. So, um, Adam, you should kind of explain yeah, I mean, how it worked. So, so the, the, the initial thing that was floating around there was, like you said, doing the special effects show. Um, and there's, there's a lot of people don't really know. There's a lot. There's different genres to people with this set of talents. I mean, there's the haunt community. There's the movie community. When it comes to creature designers, there's digital artists. There's concept artists, and all these people. I mean, the whole process requires all of these disciplines, you know, for it to come together. So, an escape room was also a really good way to showcase every part of this process that goes into the films we watch, the video games we watch. Like everything's there. Everything's represented in, in that. Um, you know, and uh, the people that are, you know, helping me achieve this, uh, you know, I mean, uh, Graham Schofield is working on the uh, scenic elements for it. And it's like, no, that's not something you necessarily get to showcase, you know, in the makeup industry or on the makeup reality TV show, but it's a skill set is a talent nonetheless. So 
it was a way to sort of bring all these people that have been in and around the industry and then have them come together in one large cohesive piece. And then rather than just having something uh, hanging on the wall or just something to observe, just doing something that guests can actually walk into and immerse themselves in. So the you know the product's more than just the one piece. It's this little sliver of a world that they get to walk into. So Adam, you've been on Face Off. Yes. <laughs> and you work for Halloween Horror Nights correct. as a creative director, correct? Correct. In Japan. Yes. So what is the connection with here at Think Tank? Is it through the company that Jacob mentioned? Um, so what? So the connection is is I uh, I appreciate John Kenneman and everything he's done for the staff on uh, <laughs> Face Off, and this was something they wanted to do and get involved with, uh, or this is something they wanted to do for the show, and I happen to have a lot of time uh, to do it, so I was like, okay, why? Well, I enjoy doing this. This is what I would be doing on my own anyway, so may as well just do it in a you know large, larger capacity. Um, and yeah, it was just a way for me to also do something a bit more intimate. Um, I've worked on the uh, two Resident Evil Escape experiences in Japan, as well as the most recent Death Note one. And we do large crowds. We have an escape experience that accommodates 200, 250 people at a time. Mm. And to, those two things involve a large opening show, a large closing show, and then a four-story puzzle that involves solving clues on an iPad and then going and... Get unlocking gun safes to get a gun to be able to walk into a room with a liquor and stuff like that. And it, but it's still PG, you know, it's still family friendly, um, and it's still really just over the top and in your face. So I thought this was also a good area to do something not so aggressive, you know. I mean, a lot of people do gore, a lot of people do the Jace and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So I wanted to do something a bit more grounded, a bit more real, um, because it's it's. The closer it is to reality, the closer it is to an experience that does happen to people, could happen to people, um, I think the more upsetting it is. I, and one thing that I've encountered in Japan is the more into the fantasy or sci-fi realm and and the less of a, of a real experience it is, the less scary it becomes. So I just wanted to sort of play with that and bring that here, and I thought this would be a cool you know moment to do it. You said you wanted something to be real. Can you explain what the theme is, or will that be giving too much away? Um, no, I don't. I don't think it'll be giving too much away. So, so if, if so, typically when I work, I have to be reeled in. Like people will be like, "Hey, what's scary?" I was like, uh, "Well, what if we have a pile of?" Oh, sorry. Well, I'm like, "What if we have like a pile of fetuses?" They're like, "Why don't you bring it back a little bit?" Like, just, <laughs> I was like, "Well, you asked." Like, because you, you know, um, like I just worked on The Exorcist maze over in Japan, and I watched that movie every day. And now I'm like, this is hilarious. Like, people are still scared of it. And I'm just like, no, 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 you got to watch this part. Um, so I know I'm desensitized to all that. But um, one thing that sort of upsets me, has always upset me, um, is the human trafficking that goes on to this day and to the degrees that it goes on. And recently, uh, like last year, I finally sat down and watched the Taken movies. And I felt... One thing that bothered me, I'm like, I don't think that's being represented as terrible as it is. Like, I was like, I think there's, like, a side to that that it, they don't even want to touch because it's a taboo subject. But at the same time, I'm like, vegans don't care. Like, they're, like, my Facebook is just animals being ripped to shreds constantly. And it's like, they're putting it in the face. And they're and honestly, they're making changes in, in, in the industry as, as a result of their efforts. So I was like, okay, well, what if... You know, there's there's organizations, there's foundations out there to, to to stop this, and I was like, what if rather than just reading statistics off to people and and oh, this is bad, and here's why, and you're giving people numbers, like what if you give them a visual? What if you give them something that that is, they can fill in the blanks, that they can bring home and relate to themselves, and hopefully make a change or or try and make a change, or even just become aware uh, of what some people are going through. Um, so that was sort of the background theme of this experience. And we're like two blocks away from Skid Row, so this shit actually does happen to some degree. Um, we're not going more on like the sex trafficking side of human trafficking. It's more of the like fantastical, extravagant Halloween side of it. So more of a gory side, but not too crazy. Um, but uh, but yeah, and then a portion of all ticket proceeds are going to local nonprofits that are fighting against human trafficking in downtown LA. Excellent. 
You just mentioned uh, it's going to be more gory than anything. And I love the fact that in your rules, it says there will be fake blood, dress appropriately. And then as like almost a PS, we mean it. We're not responsible for your bloody clothes, man. Like, that's just <laughs> awesome. That made us very happy. Yeah. Well, you know, well, there's two things to that. First of all, we don't, we, the beauty of this character and the narrative is that it's already kind of loose, cool, like spit in a pail, don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? This character fits that identity and we didn't want to take ourselves too seriously um, because I think that coming off as disingenuous is an easy way to turn off anyone who is maybe trying out an experience for the first time or someone who's out seeking a genuine experience. I mean, I, I completely... You know, to Adam's point, you know, I wanted it to feel real, as real as possible through and through. Like, I don't want some dude busting in with a chainsaw, you know what I mean? Or just like zombies or jump scares, like, that we wanted to avoid the plight of stereotypical, as many as we can, you know, I hope, uh, of stereotypical Halloween experiences. And we wanted to create one that felt like it, like you almost got like, dropped into a movie or a movie scene and and had to work your way out of it so you know in regards to the rules in regards to the gore there will be blood certainly um it's not in every crevice of the room but we think when it becomes available to the attendee it is the payoff is worth it and i think we have some really really interesting ways like one of the things that we're doing is that a lot of what you see when you walk into the gallery show, which is a free gallery show, are going to be hints or clues and some functional clues. So things that are happening on the inside are affecting the art show that's happening on the outside. In some ways, you have to try to figure out what they are. So if you have a ticket to a, a, a later show time, which people know in, in theater type events to buy tickets to the later ones, because that's when all of our actors have figured out you know, exactly <laughs> the time everything out. But uh, if you come uh, to one of the earlier days and then buy tickets to a later show time, you can kind of notice things around the gallery and, and maybe pick up a couple of clues here and there. And one of those things I think that is going to be really interesting inside is the use of blood. We have a couple little things here and there that are going to be pretty fun. So uh, it's not very, it's not stereotypical like they're saying. Are designing puzzles for something like this that much different than designing for a, a game or a room that has 200 plus people? Um, yeah, yeah, actually. So the way, the experiences we've done before is because we have to accommodate so many people. Um, usually we create a story or a theme that's centered around having some sort of digital device on you, in this case like an iPad or a tablet. Um, and we'll theme it towards a, uh, a large setting. So it's either a television studio, an umbrella lab, or something like that. And it's like, oh, here's your guide, and this and that, and here's a tour of our facility. And then uh, through our story, usually those things get hacked by, by our villain or the guy trying to help us. And it's like, here's the interface. I can't trust some of you. you got to figure this stuff out. Um, so all the puzzles are contained within our iPad, and then uh, they will go to different rooms. And the rooms themselves are, are, are kind of grand puzzles, like it'll be uh, looking at the entire room and aligning you know, numbers and, and shapes and stuff like that. Um, and you sort of have to do very, very large puzzles so that multiple people can observe them at once. So, um, so it's almost like walking into a bunch of individual little galleries and then trying to piece that together. As a result, a lot of our puzzles are mainly like knowledge-based or graphic-based um, as, as opposed to... Um, being something physical, uh, like like trying to unlock a lock or, or a combination or something like that, which is what you find in, in more of these intimate experiences. Um, however, with uh, the clue streams and the content, it's not really that different. It just um, the only th the thing we always go through is uh, engineering it so that we can get the right percentage of people that we want to be able to achieve it through. So we have a decent satisfaction rating, like most escape mazes do. Um, but that's just like constant tweaking right up until opening. That's just unavoidable, regardless of how many people you're putting through your experience. I mean, it sounds, you know, within the haunt world, there's the regular everyday mazes that people go through, like the universals. Then there's the standalone things like alone. And then there's the extreme haunts. And it almost sounds like th what this escape room is like almost the extreme version of an escape room. And 
if this works well and you have people saying, wow, this is amazing, you're doing things that no other escape room has, has done, do you see this becoming a permanent fixture somewhere? Um, I, I mean, I would... Uh, I mean, th so th this is very much, you know, our first step into into exploring this concept for this kind of venue. So, uh, I mean, it's extreme in in our themes and our content, uh, yeah. But you know, as, as Patrick mentioned, like we're not throwing the chainsaw killer out at you or anything like that. Um, I mean, if, if this, you know, if this is well received, I can totally see doing this on a higher, you know. On a, on a bigger scale somewhere else, you know, to, to you know, to go, go full immersion, go full cinematic quality with it. Yeah, it, it was interesting. Um, one, of our, one of our sponsors uh, for the show, our biggest sponsor is Sailor Jerry. And, uh, and I got to give credit to them. And it's not just because I'm trying to plug them on a podcast, but truly because we've worked with a lot of sponsors before and they're always so particular about what you can and can't do and the whole time i've been almost like oversensitive i'm like well is this okay is this okay they're like yeah dude do your thing like let it be uh -huh. what it is and we love the concept and to and to the point that was just brought up one of the first things they said was we should do this in new york like we should do this in <laughs> all the, i was like let's let's get the first one right you know i'm mm -hmm. like that enthusiasm is very humbling but you know this is jacob and i as, as think tank it's our first haunt experience and um you know we take what we do very seriously even if it's our first time and you know we're very lucky to have someone like adam on the team who can help you know shore up some of our rookie mistakes and kind of guide us in certain respects to to you know hitting pay dirt with this thing as far as getting the experience right um if the experience goes right i mean i know jacob and i have you know said it in private like we're very fond of the haunt community of, of of experiences like this because I know especially from my coming from a filmmaking background there's there are worlds you can live in in which you create a product that people consume away from you in their own home on their laptop at best in a theater with maybe 200 other people but to be able to create an experience that people can live and breathe in and to walk in and, and really stop for a minute, especially since it isn't a haunted house where you're kind of just like, well, let Jesus take the wheel. I'm just going to walk from end to end. Like you have to look at your, you know, your co-pilots in the room and work together and make a connection that you may not have made before. And like you might yell at someone you've never met before because they're in your way or they're taking too long. Um, but if you get out of that room, quote unquote, alive or whatever, there's kind of a unique companionship and like brotherhood, so to speak, that one gets emerging from that. And, you know, I can sit in a theater with 200 people and watch Suicide Squad and we all kind of like went through some trauma together. But it's not the same as actually, <laughs> but it's not the same as like really being in an experience where you kind of suspend your disbelief and you're like solving puzzles. And, and at some, usually what happens so long as everyone is participating is every single person has at least one shining moment that helped everyone escape. And that's really cool to me. And so expanding this elsewhere would be a lot of fun. We'd have to explore our bandwidth. I mean, I... <clears throat> you know, I really encourage anyone who's interested in starting an escape room experience to, to talk to Adam in particular, just because he's so knowledgeable, especially if, you know, if you're in L.A., it's a great market for it. Um, but it's, it's definitely on the table. It's the yeah. longest answer ever. And I would say, too, because we just had a conversation with Sailor Jerry yesterday, and we were, like, starting to explain to him what the ideas are. And he's quite busy right now, just it's that season. And he was just, like, we were like, we're doing some shit with your brand that, a lot of people would say no about right. like some pretty R-rated stuff with your brand. And he's just like, yeah, it all sounds cool. <laughs> like, go for it. <laughs> and we're like, all right. And I know that we do want to take some of this stuff to other cities. Like our last show, it's kind of like packaged up, ready to go. We still know the artists. We want to take it to New Orleans or New York or wherever. And I can imagine this show too. And we do have a little bit of time on our calendar. So after a media preview, which you guys will be at, I hope, next Monday, um, there will be, you know, if, if everyone gets really excited and we sell out the show, that was me knocking on wood um, mm -hmm. then yeah we could extend it for sure and, uh -huh. um, and maybe build it again sometime 
I think one of the things that, that um, I immediately spoke to Mike about when uh, this came on our radar was, number one, the story element. Uh, Mike and I are both very strong on story in escape rooms. It, it just uh, There's a difference between, okay, great, I unlocked a box and now there I have to solve another puzzle. If it's tied to a story, if it's tied to you know the I word, the immersive element of you're in an atmosphere that makes you feel something, makes you connect with a story outside the experience, which Adam, you were referring to earlier, that connection is wonderful. Um, I, I work in the film industry and there's this term called the passive consumer. And I think you just touched on it, Patrick, of the idea that you, the passive consumer is the one who goes and sits and watches. And then you have an element of, okay, well, what if they go and they buy the toy, right? That's, that's a little less than passive. Uh, the, I think one of the things that Mike and I uh, have, have really enjoyed the most in the last couple of years of our exploration of escape rooms and immersive experiences and haunts and and it's an ever-changing thing here in los angeles is the idea that it's it's the absolute opposite of passive and when you it, and it's not only active but if you can get the activities to connect with someone emotionally and it sounds like that's what you're going for and then you add to it uh, art is an emotional experience so if you if you put this in the middle of a gallery show like it's like you're uh, that's why at the very beginning of all of this i said you have an ambitious thing in front of you mm -hmm. so lord knows that's true <laughs> <laughs> we got another week left. uh and we just walked in through the construction site we know you have an ambitious thing ahead of you <laughs> you should have seen it three days ago <laughs> oh my god yeah it, you know and, and trust me i mean if there's if there's one thing you could say about not only you know Think Tank, but the people who we've been so lucky to have worked for us is that they're all scrappy and resourceful. Like I know, Break Bread. I mean, I don't, I don't even think I've, we've ever talked about this publicly, but I mean, like Break Bread wasn't done until like an hour before it opened. Oh, and now, well, luck until hour after it opened. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, now, luckily, by the nature of this show, we, you know, it's it's pretty much done days, days, days in advance. I mean, at least three to four days in advance because we need people to run through and test it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, getting these walls up has been uh, a challenge because we we have so much we're trying to accomplish. We need to get all these artists working. We've got to advertise. We've got to get our PR team. We've got to get the walls up, the distressing to look right, you know, the right people to do the job for the teaser video as far as the VFX makeup. we got to get the lounge looking good because we have you know, uh, partners that were really trying to get excited about the experience. And we want it to be door to door, end to end, uh, an experience, an experience that speaks to quality and, um, you know, being resourceful and, and really digging deep every night to see how much longer you can plug in insulation, how much longer <laughs> you can dig in drywall until your brain literally just stops running code. Um, you know, that's what has been the mainstay of, think tank gallery and you know if we had the luxury of you know having a a large budget you know something of perhaps the universal variety um <laughs> a division of labor is one of the most beautiful things a producer can ever have the privilege of doing um but when that labor is volunteer labor when that labor is on the backs of people who are working um, you know, with the equity of passion as opposed to the promise of, you know, uh, stacks of cash, um, it takes a little bit more heart and it takes a little bit more hustle. And that's something that when it's built, we take a lot of pride in. And when it's in construction, we uh, are fighting with. But, you know, at the end of the day, we, we feel really confident about what we're going to put out there. And no matter what, Anyone who's been in the gravity of this project will know that we put our all into it. And we did it for the right reasons. Well said. Thank you. And uh, you know, in response of fans of, of you know, the scene in Los Angeles, when we read this description, like, we were excited because it was so unique sounding. And so you know, hats off to you for trying something original. You know, I'm really curious. What do you guys think it is? Because we've done like some kind of marketing and I've kind of been taking what Patrick has said because he kind of built the narrative and what Adam is doing because he's designing it. And I've wrote, I've written down, you know, with our online guy, uh, Dino, who should definitely get a shout out on all this because he's been fucking killing it and he did all the, the marketing. He yeah. loves fractals. So if you see fractals, that means Dino touched it. Um, 
he's going to get a laugh out of, out of what I just said. But I wonder, because Dino and I are just kind of trying to like make it look like what we can. What, do you guys, what does it look like to you guys? What do you think you're going to see here in a week? You go ahead. Oh, um, <laughs> I, you know, it, it's still, I don't know. Um, you know, look, when you look at the flyer and you have that, that piece of art with the, the face is gone, it's like, that's what first grabs my attention because it's like, Ooh, a faceless dude. Like, awesome. You like the face off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mike's a gorehound. With Nicolas Cage, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> face off, escape room. <laughs> Let's see what you did there, Brian. <laughs> But, you know, you see that and then you see all the artists' names. The escape room part came secondary Hmm. because I was first excited just seeing like, oh, wow, like, oh, I know that name. I know that name. Oh, it's special effects and it's horror and it's during October. Awesome. Then it's like, oh, wait a second. There's more. There's they're doing an escape room, too. And then you read the description of the escape room. It's like, oh, my God, they have a hidden escape room. So you have to look at art and then find the escape room. And then I just started getting like all like, oh, my God. And then there's this and then there's this. So it's one of those things where, I mean, the poster did its job. It grabbed my attention. Good job, Dean. Yeah, <laughs> that was the first thing I said. I, I want, Sorry, not to cut you off, but to just put, he, he prays on the Dino. I walked in the room when he finished that flyer, and I said, good fucking job, Dino. <laughs> I had like a 12-hour day of work. I was on set, and I came off set and said, good fucking job, Dino. That's what I'm fucking talking about. Yeah. It was a great poster. It's like, so oh, yeah. To him. And then once once I found out there was a, an escape room attached, I started telling all the people that I, that I know that do escape rooms. I was like, hey, check this out. Look, it's an art show, and it's an escape room, and it's horror-based, and it's this, and it's that. And so... That's in a roundabout way, I guess, what I think it is. An art show and escape room at its simplest form, I guess. <laughs> okay, awesome. And we should shout out Blake Newber as well. I don't know mm-hmm. if you know that artist, but anyone who loves the horror realm should look him up. I don't know if we could link sorry, I don't know if we could link to him or something, but he has a really, really interesting technique in some of our headlining pieces where he scraped the faces off um, like in video format of some of his paintings and you see like the skin underneath. They're crazy pieces. Also, That's so cool. All right. What do you think? Well, actually, I, I went through a similar process to Mike. The first thing that grabbed my attention uh, after you know the initial imagery was I just looked at that at the list of artists and and immediately because I you know I'm horrible with names in real life I mean like wait why does this ring a bell and I started googling I started like oh holy crap I know these images I I like I recognize some of what this is and uh, so I was excited about the gallery first. Like, okay. that's what it was. And then I didn't understand, like, escape room. Wait, in the gallery? Like, I was very confused by that. And then, but when you read the instructions, when you read, like, the, the rules for the escape room, I was like, oh, hell yes, I'm in. <laughs> it, it was just because, like, it, it's, it, you're, you're plopping an escape room, which we would love anyway, into the horror genre, which Mike and I are obvious fans of, into this gallery show, which has this amazing list of artists. So I don't know how you're going to mix it. And I don't know how they, and here's something which uh, we, we've already kind of covered m- most of the questions I'd written down. One of the things is overall thematically, how does this all tie together and affect each other? How do you, you know, because you also mentioned the lounge. So, and you obviously have a sponsor, which is awesome. So like, how does that fit into the gallery? Is it just a place for rest or is there something more, is it more intricate? Is it more part of the story? That's my favorite part about the entire trap house package is that without giving too much away no spoilers there are (laughs) there are actions within the escape room that will translate outside of the escape room and so there are people who will be walking in the gallery who uh, for i guess lack of a better way to put it can kind of see some of these sos messages from inside who can interpret some of the visuals or you know activities that they're seeing outside in the gallery perhaps even into uh advantages when they go into the escape room it's like the upside down world that stranger in stranger things that's how we kind of conceptualized it yeah and um (laughs) You know, people will literally be able to get a glimpse into the escape room from the gallery, and the people in the escape room will not be able to see into the gallery. And so there are certain, I wouldn't say Easter eggs, but there's certain opportunities there for the folks in the gallery to sort of work as, serve as 
you know, uh, spectators to what's happening inside. And as far as the lounge is concerned, I feel like the lounge is kind of the, it's almost, it, it almost is going to feel like the club that Evan performs in. Oh, wow. Evan's our main character. Yeah, a little, yeah, Evan's our main character. It's going to, in some respects, it's going to feel like probably the nicer, it, it, it's going to look like CBGB with like a bit of a makeover. You wow. know what I mean? Uh, and and another shout out to Eugene Johnson, who's going to be designing that room. Um, you know, we've we've got a ton of faith that he's going to crush it. And um, we just wanted end to end this experience to feel cohesive. We wanted, you know, we wanted people who are in the escape room to understand why the lounge looks the way it does. And we wanted the people who haven't even looked into the escape room, don't know anything about the escape room, to still walk into that room and feel like it's a cool environment. Um, and what, what was the best? Well, how did I describe it today? I said it, the lounge is like punk rocks, like punk rock on Xanax mm-hmm. inside of a hard rock hotel. It's like it's got an edge to it, but it's a little mellow and it's in an environment that looks like it's taken some time to be designed and, and curated so that people can relax and have a drink. Yeah, and to be clear, the lounge is not open at all times. So during the daytime, if they're not setting up for an event at night, you can go in the lounge. You can't always get a drink. Um, and then there's a lot of kind of private events that happen in the lounge. So if you go to traphouse.la, you can, there's a calendar at the bottom, and you can click on each event. And um, there's a lot of different stuff that happens in there. So we have a, a voodoo-themed supper club from an African experiential dinner huh. uh, supper club called Mbombo. She did a show with us in uh, in February, and it's kind of take, taken off since then. Um, we have some comedy stuff. There's a, um, an event from a, a club nearby called Basic Flowers, a collective, I should say, nearby called Basic Flowers, and it's called Welcome to Hell, and it's an interview that is supposed to have taken place in hell, and the interviewer is a comedian, and she interviews comedians, and you buy tickets to it, and there's musical performances in between. So there's very, And serial killer speed dating, do you guys know mm-hmm. oh, yeah. Cable? Yep. So mm-hmm. Yes, we do. Really, really interesting take on serial killer speed dating. That, that's the thing I'm most excited for, I think, in the whole month, and he just sat down with Adam recently. Um, and then one other thing you touched on, which is how do the gallery and the escape room communicate so we kind of explained how the escape room communicates with the gallery but Adam's really been the one who's kind of brought the gallery inside both by bringing the artists inside but also by taking some of the things you're going to see in the gallery and kind of expressing them inside so what I'd be excited to hear is how much you want to talk about what you've been designing without spoiling it too much um well so we will so okay so one thing we're trying to do is is uh, there will be repeated images on the in the gallery and then those things are actually represented in some form within the escape room uh those things could or could not unlock clues uh we do we do have uh, false clue trails in this so guests may not be going down the right path um and, and like one thing like I've, I've experienced some of the escape rooms out here and it, everything's very physical everything's very find this to unlock this and which 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 you need you need that element um but there's also sort of uh um there's sort of just a general education element that i want to bring into it where it's where perhaps not all the information you need to solve that puzzle is within that room perhaps you oh what is this how do i is this from literature is this from mythology what like like just just common knowledge which i am a strong proponent of (laughs) uh just in society um so i i almost want to like Bring, bring that into this because um, w- one thing that sort of um, inspires or one of the things that sort of influences me when I do creative stuff is a lot of people that think movies are bad movies they're not bad they just all the information is there you just need to be able to pick it up you, you know what I mean um, a lot, I bring up Prometheus as the example uh, like people what? either hate that movie or totally love it and get it. I went in a deep Prometheus rabbit hole after I watched it. Did you? Yeah. And I was up till 4 a.m. just Googling stuff. And the movie's <clears throat> totally amazing and now, sound. Now and anyone, sound. yeah, and anyone who's like, ah, oh, there's a there's a bunch of holes. No, there's not one hole. They're just, it's just all the, all the, it, the information's there. You just piece it together. It's not information pertinent to that particular story that you're seeing on screen. But if you have any mm-hmm. questions, all the answers are there. So I, I've sort of taken that you know that uh, um, mo uh, with with some of this as well. So there are clue streams that you can perfectly follow. 
and then there's some riddles where you, you just if if hope you have the answer to uh, to you know to get to to the next one and it's sort of um to be honest with you it's sort of a, a rewarding you're sort of rewarded for the knowledge because um for a lot of the puzzles there's multiple ways to get the answers and you can go the hard way or if you have the you know if you have the, if you have the knowledge yourself you can take the easy way so it, it's there it, it's it's yeah there's 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 different paths there's different ways so you can you, so if people want to do you know do it again or you know repeat customers and find the other ways to solve certain answers there's there's that as well mm-hmm. um, cuz it is it is it is it's a 30 minute experience um, with with multiple sections so um, for that i wanted you to i wanted guests to be able to have be able to do it again and not necessarily have the same outcome or you know show yeah, it's kind of like a choose your own nightmare. You know what I mean? <laughs> you have multiple paths to the same like hellish conclusion. I'm in. Conclusion. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, uh, you know, we also wanted to kind of turn things on its head. Another upside down world reference, but um, he's he says that he noticed in America the these escape rooms and haunt experiences and, and et cetera are kind of physical. So we have a, a joke on that. Let's say that you, that you will find in the room, and it's. A pretty terrible joke. Like, uh, <laughs> my <nightmarish>. specialty. <laughs> yeah. Nightmarish is a good way to put it. Hmm. So, will there be a clue based on eleven then? Hmm. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, one thing that you mentioned earlier is the the lounge is is almost like a CBGB's. The most important question I have: Will there be a CBGB's esque bathroom? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, our, our bathrooms are uh, to code. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, no. <laughs> uh, so, you're light years above a lot of haunts already in that category, <laughs> then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, our, our gallery does feature a bathroom for shout both. Shout out Inspector Clay. Yeah, shout out room. Inspector Clay. Please uh, be nice. Um, yeah, we've got a, we got a bathroom we might spruce up. We'll see how much time our designer has. Yeah, we, there is a I theme, like that idea, though. There's a theme bathroom I've been, I, I've been working on. Mm. I've just been using it all week and not flushing. So. <laughs> it's true. Oh. <laughs> That's the other escape room experience. It's $5. We lock you in the room. And if you stay in there for 30 minutes, we'll give you a, a, a trinket of some sort. We'll figure that out. Let's put it this way. There's you. If you buy tickets to the escape room, you will have a very, very fucked up experience in your bathroom. And this we can promise. That's true, actually. That's actually true. So, you, 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 can, you, can, you, you can quote us on that. You will have a fucked up experience in the bathroom if you buy tickets to this. Okay. I want to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things, Russell, you mentioned earlier is the passive consumer. And we've been talking a lot about uh, the immersive stuff going on in L.A. And it, the cool thing, just from speaking to you guys, it sounds like this has a mix of all of those different types of people. If you're like Russell and I, and you are chatty, you want to be immersed in the story, it sounds like you can interact with, with people on the outside as well as on the inside. If you want to just be a bystander, you can just sit back and watch things. So it sounds like there's different things for different people here, which is really cool. You might even be interacted with before you even show up. I'm just, Excellent. I'm, just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. That was my head exploding. Uh can't Anything? go into too much, but in <laughs> case it doesn't work. <laughs> I think I already talked about that on Noah's podcast. Uh, you uh, may, no, you may have out. mentioned, <laughs> you may have hinted back. something on another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously you've got ambitious plans for this season. Uh, Think Tank is definitely a fixture on the scene here in Los Angeles. I would love it if we could go down the row here and please talk about other projects you have coming up, individual things that you might have coming up. Um, I know someone in this room traveled to get here. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Just a little so, bit. And, uh, and uh, please give us a little bit. What else is going on for all of you? Um, well, um, I, was, I was actually happy I was able to make it. I just wrapped uh, Halloween Horror Nights for Universal Studios Japan. Um, and so I had just enough time to come here and w- work on this, knock it out, punch it up for what, what they needed it to be. And then uh, I actually head back uh, mid-October for, um, it was actually just announced on Facebook. It's a samurai spectacular show for the Osaka Castle. Um, so, wow. What is that? <laughs> it's, just, it's on... Uh, look it up on Facebook. Look right? it up on Facebook. Well, um, right here. well it's, um, 
I'm not sure. It's, it's in Japanese, so I'm not sure how much they said about it. Um, but um, but uh, yeah, it's sort of this samurai spectacle stunt show, and um, it's one of our first ventures outside of our Universal Studios property. Whoa. So we'll actually be doing this in front of the Osaka Castle as a, wow. as part of this cultural outreach program for, um, I, I believe it's called Cool Japan, um, which I've, I've done in the previous years. Uh, we've In the previous years, our Cool Japan iteration was... Uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion 3D movies, uh, Resident Evil Escape Mazes, and then we also do the Monster Hunter experience where we have full size Monster Hunter dragons. Um, yeah, we do. It, it's <laughs> we try to make stuff real over there as possible. Yeah. So um, yeah, so I'll be so Cool Japan's coming around again. So I'll be jumping back on that for the new year. Um, yeah, and then uh, and uh, I can't talk about the next project after that. Um, but then, yeah, Halloween Horror Nights always kicks up again. And so. that's, you've been working on Halloween Horror Nights for Japan uh, leading up to this, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. For the past few months, I was working on the Death Note Escape experience, which was a four-story escape maze based oh, wow, on the awesome. Death Note franchise. It's, it, was, uh, it was really fun to work on. And, and, you know, that's the thing that's not grounded in horror. It is, is very much a puzzle of the mind, which, you know, solving clues and it's a whole detective mystery. And I don't know if you know the Death Note. Yes, anime. yeah, I'm familiar okay. with that. Yeah, it's such a creepy. Yeah, so yeah, it's it's all mood and tone and creepiness, and it's like such rich potential for it was haunt oh, escape room everything. It, could... it was a fun experience to do. Like we had a full size Shinigami. We had the artists who worked on the new Death Note uh, movie. Wow. So when they when they do CG in Japan, they build a physical one always. Like they always build a physical monster. They did it for Death Note. They did it for Parasite, um, and then. And it's just because, you know, maybe they like the physical one over CG. They just want both those options. So the person that made our physical st- made the physical stand-in for the Tokyo uh, movie, they came and did a Shinigami for us for the Death Note experience. And it was, it was beautiful. It was really freaking cool. Um, so, but yeah, it was, it was very much about, uh, you know, it, it, we always do. Everyone's going to die at the end of an hour. And you have <laughs> this much time to either cure your virus, stop the bomb, or whatever. And it, and uh, yeah, but it's it's very much puzzle based, and we work with a company called Scrap, um, and Scrap is notorious in Japan for all these puzzle mazes. But um, when they came to us, they, typically it's in a football field, and there and people are running to papers, mm-hmm. or they're sitting at a table and doing all these puzzles. Um, so when they came to work with us, we were the first ones actually building like they were going to be in a fully you know immersive environment like i've only they, done one of the scrap events oh really so, and, you know, and also mike you were in that new crew too yeah, yeah okay. and yeah. They, they did the attack on titan escape here yes. as well oh they did one here mm-hmm. okay i like i'm over there so much i actually don't know what's happening in this country anymore <laughs> so um but so, but yeah they're they're amazing guys to work with so question for you is is that kind of escape more is that what happens more so in japan where it's almost more like a scavenger hunt Instead of solving puzzles and opening things, and uh, yeah, I mean, Scrap is the like forerunner for quote unquote escape mazes. Um, and as far as sort of the American style of escape maze, we're the closest that like the we're sort of a hybrid with that. Um, which I mean, which is sort of my job because we deal with um, the reason I work there so much is because we deal with so many United States properties, or and even Resident Evil, even though it's a Japanese property, it's set in. America, so just the nuance of American production design and stuff like that. Um, it's sort of working together to make sure everyone's vision is cohesive. But at the same time, it's like, you know, feels like an American setting or feels like a Japanese setting. Um, so, uh, but as far as the content of the puzzle and stuff like that, it is very mental as opposed to unlocking something. Um, however, that that's also a result of the fact that we have to accommodate 250 people at a time. So, right. as opposed to six. <laughs> We have, uh, I'm sure, listeners of the podcast who are fans of Universal Halloween Horror Nights here. Uh, a friend of mine has actually, for the last couple of years, traveled to Florida to do both California and Florida Universal Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, just out of curiosity, really quickly, compare the Japanese version of Halloween Horror Nights. I mean, are the franchises the same? Uh, I just touch on that really briefly. Um, sometimes we will overlap franchises. Uh, like we, like all the parks at some point did an Alien vs. Predator maze. Right. Um, you know, there's different uh, when you when you do that. There's sort of different expectations uh, from the different audiences. Um, like I know Orlando's iteration was LV426, based on primarily on Aliens, 
and then the um, the Hollywood version was based on the Colorado far farmhouse. So for us, we I really we had to hit with things that resonated with the jet what the Japanese audience knew of Alien vs Predator. And when they had asked me what I wanted to do, and I was like, well, I'm not going to do it unless we're building the full Alien Queen in the Hive. I was <laughs> like, that's the that's the moment. That's what we do. And everyone was like, yeah, we're doing this. So, um, yeah, so what we did, and then, and then the other thing, this is an interesting tidbit, is a lot of American haunts will uh, location jump. And unless we have a device to do that within a character or a story element, it's very jarring and it's very strange and it will take the audience out of the moment. So as an example, like if you go through our Nightmare on Elm Street house and you're in the locker room and then you're in Freddy's boiler room and then you're in Nancy's bedroom and you have that device of the dream. And so people are willing to succumb to randomized locations. If, you know, we like we recently did the Exorcist house and, you know, we built the house and it and it's all in the house. Like, because for us to jump to Iraq or, or, or wherever Pazuzu was found or to jump to the hospital yeah. scene, it's like, why? Why are we in the hospital? It's like, so, so we create, so, which is very cool. It's very constraining, but at the same time, it's very, it, it's kind of a creative exercise to create new scenes within the, the context of the movie. So, you know, like we explored the attic scene uh, where nothing really happens, but we had a Regan attack in our in our attic scene that you actually find in you know in the movie when she's there with the little candlelight. Oh yeah, the great candle scare yeah. in the beginning. Yeah, because yeah. I just always thought that was it was just scary, you know. Um, or what we'll do is we'll expound upon the Pazuzu face in the kitchen. So you know, we, like our right. kitchen scene was like we had Pazuzu appear in the window, the dishes crash around you, dra drawing your attention, and then the lighting changes and Pazuzu's in the room with you. So we, you know it's 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 a deviation from the movie but it's still holding true to our franchise so right be, but because we have to constrain ourselves to need to take place in this environment we I don't know we we come up with some pretty creative stuff and just some you know new moments for the guests um and the you know and it's not necessarily something that as long as it's scaring our audience and they're having a good time that's that's part of what you know like I think I mentioned Jesus off mic like we we have a strong differentiation between being startled and being scared, like being filled with fear. And we will, when we do our guest satisfaction and, and our, our reviews, it's like, well, I was startled, but I was not scared. And it's like, oh, man, this is, wow. It's, it's, it's just I find a, it fascinating that you differentiate that way. It's I, like I, Japanese words for it that are more powerful than the English language could convey. It's, I think, yeah, there, there probably is. But, um, but yeah, like even for our Alien versus. Uh, predator maze we knew we were building it in a tent so rather than just you know jumping in and doing the colorado fortis like hollywood or, or the space station i was like okay mobile Wayland yutani lab like like let's let's ground this tent so that mm -hmm. literally from the moment guests see the maze it they're in the story like it's it's all playing into it's you know like our weakness was like we gotta build in a tent it's like well let's make the tent make sense so so from that, you know, jumping off point, you know, we can create this cohesive and immersive environment that no one's looking, you know, at something that's like, you know, we have to put up there for facility reasons. Like, if we have to do something and it's like, well, we need this light here for this reason, it's like, okay, well, let's make it make sense. And then, so we'll design our functionality for operations into the set. So it's, you know, I mean, we got to the point that we just started filming commercials on our set. Wow. Right? So, yeah. That's cool. Mm-hmm. We need to go to Japan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Seriously. Uh, and uh, so you're going back, in the, it sounds like the middle of this run. Uh, yeah, like I, around October 16th, I think I'm heading back over there. So. And then we're on our own. <laughs> and uh, obviously you've you've already filled your uh, Halloween season with Think Tank's ambitions here, but uh, can you highlight anything that's coming up for you guys in Think Tank? Yeah, we uh, in in December we have Comic Arts Los Angeles, which is an independent comic convention that we hold here. It'll be what our third year. It'll be our third year, uh, and it's it's really awesome. Uh, you know, when when these guys first came in, you know, it's a coin toss. You know, they can. It's all about the curation of who you're bringing in, but they've really consistently brought in some really great people. Uh, Matt Groening has been there three years in a row, oh, wow. uh, or two years in a row rather. 
Um, so, you know, it's getting to the point where instead of fanboying out, I'm like, hey, Matt, that's a good one. <laughs> you know? um, and he's a super friendly guy. I mean, if anyone's wondering, like, I can just answer it for you. Very friendly guy. Very passionate about, you know, animation. And, um, you know, we had a featured animator, uh, Lila Ash, who was there um, that we were featuring. And, you know, he came over, bought her book, like, chatted her up a little bit. And then went on his way so we've got that going on i really recommend people coming there's always a line out the door so get there soon or early rather <laughs> and then awkward um human. what's that awkward. yeah awkward human and the show after comic arts los angeles i'll let jacob dive in um on that one but that one in particular is uh is going to be a special one it's going to be one that we're kind of co-producing but um the guy who's producing it is just amazing Yes, Awkward Human is like, I think it's another podcast, is, is their biggest claim to fame, but uh, he's doing basically a show that takes place in 300 years as an archive of the last 300 years, and it's uh, raunchy, to say the least. Um, we're talking to Pornhub right now as a sponsor, so um, <laughs> there's a, a couple crazy things that you might run into with that show. <coughs> this dude just calls us, and he hits us up with some insane ideas, and he's like, I didn't think anyone say yes to me about this, and then we're just like, let's go for it, so... <laughs> That's, a, that's one thing. Um, and then I'm planning a, another show alongside Patrick, uh, like our next big group art show, which we'll figure out some immersive elements. It's called Drinking Smoking in the West Coastin'. And it's a uh, giant, probably 100 artist group art show about the city of LA because we haven't done like our love letter. It's like a love hate letter to the city of LA. Uh -huh. And then, um, and we have, I mean, the, the biggest thing on my mind right now is how am I going to get Dick Smith's work into this show? Because the guy who made The Exorcist is in our show, and I'm like, I can't even think past that moment. So I'm thinking in the future is a little a little much for me right now. Um, yeah, the, I mean, we pretty much covered everything that's notable. Not but, yeah, Not on Broadway would be the, the last thing that we, we we're very, very, very proud of. Uh, not on Broadway. Speaking of love, you know, love letter to LA. For anyone who doesn't know, it's a uh, festival we put on in the last Saturday of every January uh, on behalf of Councilmember Jose Wezar, who's just been really great as far as just letting us take the model and run with it. It's uh -huh. definitely <clears throat> like kind of going back into the Sailor Jerry conversation. It's definitely not. I don't feel like I have someone breathing over my shoulder. We've been very successful in just we come up with a weird idea like you know hey we want to put chess boxing in the middle of the street uh we end up with a boxing ring in the middle of the street and we got jose Wizar to you know introduce a match and we got max sabbath to play at the tower theater and if anyone doesn't know who max sabbath is it's a uh black sabbath cover band of mcdonald's characters who take max sabbath max sabbath lyrics and supersize them i guess and they're they're <laughs> fucking amazing if anyone has not looked them up please do like immediately just you'll be in love um and it's a big deal it's 65 last year we had sixty thousand people maybe more it's a wow. free, it's a free event so i'm not trying to sell you anything um i think this year it'll be running from early afternoon ish till about 11 p.m and we close down seven blocks of broadway street and open up uh, all the historic theaters we can. And we just put acts on the stages. And they're all amazing. I mean, last year we had Skrillex in one theater, uh, Reggie Watts in another, uh, you know, Zen Arts and all the Cirque acts, you know, on um, bookending the festival. And then we had like Aloe Black performing, Ozo Motley for anyone who's into that. Um, really, really great stuff. And it, it basically feels like South by Southwest in downtown LA. And it's it's a really really special event. So and everything's free. Yeah. That's very cool. I didn't realize that you opened the old theaters for that. Oh yeah, and they're beautiful. If anyone hasn't been yeah. in these Broadway theaters, I mean, it seems like you have just from your reaction. Um, I don't know if they still do it, but there used to be a walking tour mm -hmm. that you would literally walk into the jewelry stores, and they, like they knew you were coming, and they would suddenly like open. You'd walk through an office, and you'd step into this amazing theater that now has a jewelry store in the front of it yeah and it was it's, it's just it was a really bizarre experience but there there used to be a walking tour that would take you into a whole bunch of them in downtown because the buildings are still there yeah and and you know it's funny because not on broadway started as day on broadway which was basically uh you know a, a more glorified version of that kind of tour it was like open up the theaters let people check right. them out like this will be fun and then the, you know when not on broadway first kicked off i, I don't think any of us truly knew what we had 
accidentally stumbled upon because I think if uh, if the traje- if if not on Broadway meets its trajectory, I think without question, as long as we maintain the integrity of making it like for the people, uh, I, I truly think it will be one of the most notable festivals uh, in Los Angeles. Absolutely, and you know I wouldn't say that unless I meant it. That's very exciting. Wish you all the luck with that. That's awesome. Thank you. And yeah, everybody, I, I really encourage you to come. It's free. Bring your family. There's something for everyone to do. Um, we're not trying to sell you anything. Just go have a good time. Same as Trap House, but we are trying to sell you something. Yeah, <laughs> buy, buy, t- <laughs> buy tickets for that, and then we'll give you Not on Broadway for free. But the art show is free at Trap House, so if, uh, if you don't want to spend the 35 bucks, 25 right now with Early Bird, um, then uh, just come enjoy the art. So it's 25 for the Early Bird, and how much afterwards? Uh, it, anywhere between 30 to 35. I mean, there's going to be various promotion opportunities. So if you're trying to score, you know, a couple of dollars off your tickets, just pay attention to our social networks. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll be posting codes and stuff for people to take advantage of. Also, if you want cheaper tickets, uh, we have matinee times. So if you want to show up early on a Monday, then, you know, you get a cheaper ticket. And that is for the escape room part. That is for the escape room. Yeah. Okay. Just just to repeat, if you want to come check out the art and the artwork alone is worth making the trip to downtown if you're on the west side, which I know is the most painful thing for anyone out there to do. Uh, it's well worth it. Really, really incredible work. And we're, we're very, very humbled to have been granted access to a lot of these works and, um, you know, excited to see the response. You feel get, free to take pictures. You get a peek into the escape room anyway to see if you're, if you're sure about spending that 30 bucks. Mm-hmm. And when do you open and what days are you running and what times? We open on the 8th and for the most part our times for the escape rooms are going to be pretty much like noon to midnight. I think 11.50 is when our last show ends. It's a 30 minute experience. There's about 10 minutes in between each show and then we got to give our our actor and, and crew like a little 50 minute break in between. You can find all the show times at traphouse.la. We got a little calendar for you that you can access. Uh, if you show up on a Tuesday or Wednesday, just don't. We're going to be not open. And if you, we don't want you to be disappointed or sad. We want you to show up on uh, anywhere between Thursday to Monday and be just stoked. Unless, and I don't know if you guys are bringing in Nick from Screenshot Productions, but he's taking over our space on our, on our off days uh, for his own take on the space. Mainly, mainly in the lounge, but a couple unactivated parts of Think Tank. He's doing his, uh, his show, The Rope. So um, you can buy tickets to that on traphouse.la as well. But uh, that one I'm also really excited about to, uh, to kind of run through it and see what he's, what he's cooking. Yeah, and I'm, I'd just like to add the, the serial killer speed dating. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it, it's cool because we'll have the escape room. Uh, and even if you're just not into speed dating, you're just into networking, it, it's going to be an altered experience for that so it's not the typical escape room it's a little it's a little heightened there's a little wild card if you if you go in with the serial killer speed dating yeah <laughs> and then you can meet someone at speed dating state yeah you can meet <laughs> someone at speed dating take them into the escape room and then not escape you, and, that's true ooh, that's true yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right i just want to point out see folks who listen to this podcast regularly mike truly is a romantic at heart <laughs> <laughs> it's true I get, I get that vibe already. Come into the He's been eyeing me room. from across the room this whole time. <laughs> you got I'm blushing. I'm mouth. blushing. <laughs> oh, anything else we need to cover? My lap right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys by the way thank you guys for for even doing this i mean for for us we you know we don't take opportunities like this you know lightly we're always very humbled by any sort of attention we can get for this stuff because we're you know we're rookies and we you know although you know we are certainly investing all of our best efforts and time and um you know ideation into building this up and you know for you guys to recognize what we're doing and to to make the effort to come all the way out here and um you know give us this time i we we all really appreciate it i mean thank you guys i mean you're in the middle of building this uh racetrack <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i mean just taking the time out to to talk to us and when you could be doing eight literally eight million other things like that means a lot to us so thank you guys for taking the time and and thank you very much yeah absolutely and and we were sincere in what we said earlier and the fact that we looked at that 
original posts, the website, the artist names. Like we encourage everyone to come down to this. The gallery show, I, I just just from the roster that you have acquired is going to be something to remember from this season. Mm -hmm. This 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 is definitely going to be one of the highlights of the season, I think. And and we definitely encourage everyone uh, everyone to come down and check out Think Tank this season. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Yeah, and one thing like when you come down here, uh, like when you buy a piece, like that's just this is a public service message. <laughs> when you buy a piece, you're supporting that artist to do another piece because uh, this form of artwork so much goes into it, so much time goes into it. And one of the artists, for example, Ben Plowman, he's doing this like uh, he's he's doing an oversized lifelike sculpture, and he's put the months. Frosted. Yes, and he's put months into it, mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful piece. It's amazing. And if somebody buys it, he gets to make another one. You know, he's doing a limited run of it. Um, and yeah, it, so people in the market for that, like, by all means, come out to the show. At the same time, though, like, we, we're going to have digital artists. I'm a digital artist. So, uh, you know, I'm going to have canvas prints and stuff available for just the, you know, the casual collector, so to speak. Um, so, yeah, we're trying to make this accessible for everybody. It's not just go in and buy a giant Mike Hill piece. It's, you know, you, oh, you can walk out with just a little something just to remember the whole experience by. So, yeah, this is, this is I encourage everybody, even if you're, you've never heard of any of this stuff, come down and check it out because it's, it's going to change you. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you, Lagunitas. Yeah, Lagunitas. Oh, we love you. I've been drinking you the whole time during this podcast. <laughs> I swear we don't get paid to, for any of this shit. We just happen to be, you know, blessed with cool people running these companies. So. Thank you guys sincerely for being on My Haunt Life podcast. It was really exciting to hear about this. Best of luck for the season. Adam, best of luck with everything. We know you're going to travel back in the middle of all this, back to Japan. But yeah. you know, good luck with everything on both sides. Appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And thank for everyone listening. And we do, once again, stress. Go to the website, buy a ticket, come see the free art gallery show at Think Tank this season. We guarantee you, you will see something that will emotionally move you. Uh, this is something not to miss. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. So obviously, that interview contained so much information. We are really grateful to the guys for sitting down. Uh, and we can't even begin to describe just how grateful we are because we walked into that space and it literally was a construction zone. Yeah. There were people hanging drywall. <laughs> there were people hammering and sawing. And, and they took their time out of all of that to to sit down and talk to us about some of the cool stuff that they have planned. So thank you again for taking the time, guys. We really appreciate it. We recommend everyone check this out. Uh, it's going to be cool. Yeah, I can't wait to go back. Yes. Uh, it opens on Saturday, and we unfortunately we won't be in town, but as soon as we get back, we need to figure out a date to go back and check out the art show and check out the 100% the finished escape room. Absolutely. And for more information on Trap House, you can go find them on the web at traphouse.la. One thing we should also mention, uh, last night when we were down at the space, um, uh, Jacob specifically pointed us, said that there will be a calendar there. And I believe he, he also mentions it, I know, in the interview. But uh, he was telling us about some of the events, which... Uh, it sounds like they're going to have a very, very busy month. Check out the calendar because there will be events. That it, when you purchase the ticket to the event, you also get the escape room as part of that. So there'll be lots of ticketing opportunities and uh, keep an eye out for discount codes, et cetera, as they mentioned in the interview. Yeah, and on the calendar, you'll see, uh, and they mentioned it in the interview actually as well, but you'll see friends of My Haunt Life, such as Nick and Screenshot Productions. Uh, he's doing the rope there. And also Abel and Serial Killer Speed Dating is doing a night there. Which I, the serial killer speed dating, every time they mention that, did you notice the weird little gleam in the eye that they got? I did. They have, they've got something they know planned. Something. Yeah, they've got something planned for that edition of serial killer speed dating. So I have a feeling it's going to be a lot of fun. So we definitely know there's something up with that. So I uh, highly recommend getting in on that. Uh, again, uh, thank you, Think Tank. Uh, looking forward to what you have in store for this season. Thank you again, Adam, Patrick, and Jacob. We really appreciate it. And for more information about us, you can check us out on the web at myhauntlife.com. If you'd like to contact us, you can reach out directly at mike at myhauntlife.com or russell at myhauntlife.com with... Two S's and two L's, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so that wraps it up. I'm Mike. And I'm Russell. And thanks for listening. Insert creaky door here. Oh,
guess. Go ahead. Go for it. You go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I'll do it. Age, age before beauty. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm used to it. <laughs> this is our thing. <laughs>